tenderloin is one of the leanest meats that you can buy today. However, to cook it so it's juicy every single time, you need to learn a few tricks. Now, sear roasting is a method that restaurants use to make sure that what's put in front of us is always tender and juicy. And it's something you can do at home very easily. Here's how. So this is what a pork tenderloin looks like. They usually come in about a pound, a pound and a quarter in size, and this will feed four people very easily. Now, one of the first things we have to do with pork tenderloin is take the silver skin off. And the reason for that is because the silver skin acts a little bit like a sheath around the meat and will actually close down while the meat is cooking and choke the meat off. So what we need to do is take this off and it's very easily done. Again, you just need a sharp knife and you just kind of get in there under the uh, silver skin. And then you can actually start pulling it off while you're cutting. If you want the butcher to do this for you, some butchers will do this for you as well. But if you ever get this home and you need to do it yourself, this is how you do it. All right, so now the sheath has been removed. The next thing I want to do is cut a little incision on the tail end of the tenderloin. The reason I want to do that is I'm going to tuck that tail end underneath and then I'm going to tie the entire tenderloin down with some butcher string. Now the reason I'm doing that again is because we want the tenderloin to be an even thickness throughout. Otherwise what happens is if you've got this tail end sticking out, this is going to cook a lot faster than the rest of the tenderloin. It's going to get really dry while we're waiting for the rest of the tenderloin to cook. So this is how you do this. It's a very easy thing to do. You just measure oh, about five inches or so from the tail end. You just cut a little bit of an incision here, not all the way through, and that allows us then to just bend that tail end in underneath, and we're just gonna do the same thing a little bit with the head here so that we get an even thickness as much as possible. Now you take your butcher string and just slide it down around the meat and then tie it down. The next thing we need to do is get our pan nice and hot. To sear meat properly, you need to use a pan that can get very hot. In this case, I'm using a cast iron pan because all I have to do is put it on medium heat, let it sit here for about five minutes and it'll get very hot, which is what I'm looking for to do a proper sear. So it's best to use a cast iron pan or something like it as opposed to a nonstick pan to sear meat properly. So while our pan is getting nice and hot, we need to get the tenderloin ready for searing. One of the first things we need to do is just pat it dry to remove all of the moisture on the meat. The moisture actually creates a barrier between the meat and the pan, which means the sear isn't going to be as good. So we want to remove that moisture easily with a paper towel. Next, all I'm going to do is apply a little olive oil to the tenderloin and then a little salt and pepper and then we're ready to sear it in our hot pan. So now my pan is nice and hot. I can tell because I'm starting to get some fumes coming off the top of that. So what I'm going to do now is add a little bit of oil to this. And it's good to add the oil when the pan is hot because you actually use less. It covers the bottom a lot easier. And then we're going to put in our tenderloin. And that's the sound you want to hear. That tells me the pan is nice and hot. Now to sear meat properly, you have to leave it there. Don't touch it, don't move it, don't lift it, don't peek at it. It's got to sit on that surface of the pan for at least two to three minutes to get a really nice sear. Now searing does a couple of things. It locks in the flavor of the meat and it also adds a nice brown crust which adds a tremendous amount of flavor to the finished product. So we're going to let it sear on one side, then we're going to sear it on the other. Basically we're going to sear the meat on all its four sides. So this is a nicely seared pork tenderloin. You can see it's got lovely color everywhere. So now we're going to finish cooking the pork in the oven. It's actually not cooked through, all we did was sear it. So we're going to finish cooking it by roasting it in a very hot oven. The oven's been preheated to about 425, 450 degrees. 
in goes the pork. So the tenderloin's been in the oven roasting for approximately 20, 25 minutes. So now I'm going to show you how I know that the tenderloin is actually done. There's a couple of different ways that you can do it. What not to do, however, is to slice it open to see if it's done because slicing into the meat actually releases all of those wonderful juices. So you don't want to do that. One of the things you can do is use a meat thermometer and it tells you, it comes with instructions telling you how hot the meat should be inside. With pork, it's about 165 to 170 degrees. But I'll tell you, just touching with your fingers is one of the easiest ways to know if the meat is done. Now I'm touching this and it's actually quite firm to the touch. So this is telling me that the meat is ready to take out of the oven. So you can see that the pork is still slightly pink inside. So I've taken it out probably five to eight degrees before that 165 to 170 degree time frame that I gave you before. Now, what I'm going to do is just let the meat rest. What that means is I'm just going to leave it on my board here and I'm gonna tense it loosely with some foil and I'm just gonna let it sit for about 10 minutes. What's going to happen during that period of time is the temperature is going to continue to rise that additional five to seven degrees. The meat will continue to cook. So by the time I come to serve it, it will no longer be pink inside. It will be perfectly done and juicy and wonderful to eat. So now the tenderloin has been resting for about 10 minutes and you actually can see that now it is perfectly done on the inside. The pink is all gone, but the meat is actually still very juicy. As you can see, when I'm uh, squeezing the meat, there's actually some lovely juices there. So that is the easiest way to do pork tenderloin, to get lovely, tender, and juicy results.